everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm Bob Lincoln, chief person of the school board, and we have a great turnout compared so far to most of our other meetings. And thank you for that. So I'll ask you to please rise and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we have a roll call. Gene Beaton? Here. Jay Brady? Yes. E. Flynn? T. Giles? B. Jellison? Here. Arlen Connor. Here. H. Randall. Here. K. Van Bergen. Thank you. We do have a quorum. First item of business is the consent agenda. One motion to approve the minutes from October 12, 2023, and approve the minute list. Yes. So moved. moved by Ben. Second. Second by Herb. Any changes or omissions? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? The motion carries unanimous. Next item is the public comment period. If anybody would like to speak in the public comment period, we have a limit of three minutes, it can be extended. We ask that you state your name and the town that you live in. And if you're, as you're approaching three minutes, I'll let you know. So, yes, ma'am. Uh, Bonnie Maroney, uh, town of Carroll, Selectman. Um, having a Having heard from several parents in the town of Carroll about this seventh, eighth grade transition, I would like to ask who set up the transition advisory committee and didn't it re why didn't they reach out to some of the parents and teachers to ask their thoughts? Um, why should the students have to ride even longer on the bus than uh, to go where the build, excuse me, ride even longer on a bus when there are buildings at the regional that can, are being used for the SAU office staff? Why don't we move into, move them into those classrooms and using giving them a space to use for the students instead of transporting them all the way to the other the other places? Um, other disturbing items that I am hearing are the students are being allowed to come to class dressed as assorted animals and disturbing other students. We are paying over forty thousand dollars per student in this town for our children to be there to learn not to deal with harassment from fellow students that should not be allowed to act this way or remove from the school when they do. They are there to learn. I've also heard from parents of young children that do not want to send their children to the White Mountain Regional School due to all the issues that they are hearing, asking what they, else they can do. This is truly a problem that needs to be addressed. You don't want the town of Carroll to leave the system, but nothing appears to be running as it should for the taxes each town pays for a good education. Something needs to be done. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Yes. I, I saw this gentleman first. Uh, Kyle Cormier from Jefferson. I just wanted to quickly uh, thank the administration and uh, the teachers, the preschool teachers, for making the uh, adjustments to the four-year-old preschool uh, hours so they're getting that extra day. Uh, it really means a lot to the parents that, that fought for this. So I uh, just wanted to acknowledge that and thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Alex Foley, uh, Bretton Woods, Carol. Um, unlike the gentleman, I don't see a lot of good coming of this administration. And this move of the 7th and 8th grade is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, my kid lives in Bretton Woods. That's 20 miles from Lancaster. <clears throat> 20 miles from Lancaster. Currently, we, as all of the parents, thought we would be able to use the, shop, the, the bus system. But guess what? We can't because it's over a two-hour ride for a kid. Four hours in a bus at age 7? That's not okay. No child can spend four hours a day in a school bus. And that's going 12 miles, but not even. What's going to happen when it's in Lancaster? Are we talking about three hours, four hour bus rides each way? Each way? That's just completely unacceptable. And I can't even believe that this idea is even fluid. It's embarrassing. Thank you. I'm Aaron Cody, uh, also from Carroll. I just wanted to share that, that from the kids' perspective, 
you know, our kids started the school year riding the bus. We haven't used the bus before um, because uh, it's already a challenged bus route to get kids from this town, which is the farthest in this direction, as you know, um, to Whitefield, let alone Lancaster. Um, we are now but, uh, driving our kids to and from school every single day because uh, they don't, they can't do that. They, they were becoming miserable every day after school. Instead, when we pick them up from school, the kids get home around 2.45. On the bus, they get home around 4.15. That's a huge difference. And, and to, to call that the providing a busing option for kids, I don't think is, is reasonable. To, to expect a kid to spend that long, and again, at that age, seven-year-olds, six-year-olds, eight-year-olds, to spend many hours a day sitting on a bus. There's not adequate supervision on buses. We all know this. So for this age group to spend that amount of time on a bus is not going to work. But what that does, if we are looking out for the interests of the kids, then what that means is the parents have to shoulder that. And not all parents have the flexibility to do that. We're thankful that we can. But to ask us now to drive an extra 10 minutes each direction multiple times a day, um, because the bus system hasn't been able to work for our town, um, I think is inappropriate to expect. Um, I would echo what Bonnie said, if there is a necessity to move these kids, we have a central location, which is the, the high school. Um, moving to the far extremity of this district, um, half, half of these kids, uh, the seventh and eighth graders, I think would, would be intolerable in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'm Sarah Place Rulo. I live in Twin. <clears throat> I have a daughter going into, she'll be going into seventh grade next year and we are not for moving them to Lancaster at all. <clears throat> I'm hoping that you guys will revisit using the high school. I don't know if that is something also being discussed. Also, most of the feedback that I hear from other parents in the community they strongly feel also that it's not a good idea. And I'm hoping some sort of survey goes out soon where parents have a chance to voice these opinions. And also, sometimes when these ideas are presented, I feel like they, it would be more helpful if instead of just, I mean, if the parents were to have some sort of visual, like some more of a solid plan, because how could they possibly get on board with something that so vague. Can I interject? Well, a little I, bit? I was going to. Can I interject? <coughs> I hear you. I hear everybody. Um, this is a feasibility study. There's been absolutely no decisions made. And after this meeting, Jeremy has the surveys and they're going out. They were crafted. And then there is a link at the beginning of the survey that does outline like the model. I hear you about that transportation. We've been working with WW Berry all year long. We originally had 13 routes budgeted. Right now we have eight. And it's because there's no bus drivers. We, we, we tried to remedy, and we understand that twin, twin to Whitefield is crazy right now. It's a horrific, horrific ride, but we don't have any solutions right now. Uh, we're open to any suggestions. Um, so um, I will be, in my report, be talking a little bit more about this how much uh, we've already looked into different aspects of this uh, seven eight going to Lancaster and Whitefield being the pre-K center. You'll hear that, but you'll also hear that it's not even near close to any kind of decision whatsoever. Same as the other study. Parents clearly said they did not want the seven eight at the high school. The board accepted that and said, we're shutting that down. So, so we hear you, we do hear you. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify, the 7 8 advisory committee to the board was formed, I believe it was in March or April of this year. It was, and, and a request went out to everyone in the district of were they interested in sitting as a member of the committee. The committee right now is made up of 17 stakeholders. Those 17 people include teachers, administrators, parents, and just taxpayers that don't even have children in the school. I mean, these individuals are represented on this committee. They're tasked with looking at options. They did the 7-8 transition to the high school. 
didn't told us they didn't think it was feasible. Now they're looking at the possibility of 7-8 going to Lancaster. Not a done deal. We haven't discussed it as a board. When we get the recommendation from the committee, then we will make a decision. It could be three or four months from now. So we do listen to input. I mean, no matter what you hear on the internet or on social media, this is, this is the truth. There are 17 different stakeholders sitting in a room that are open to the general public. The, the, the date that they meet and the times are listed on the website. Anybody can go and see, and I don't know if you allow public comment, they probably do. So nothing's done, you know, without anybody knowing. Mm -hmm. Josh Robertson from Twin Mountain. Who decided who belongs on this committee? Was it open to anybody? It was open to everybody. Where was it publicized? It was, it was open to everybody, however, the board had to vote. That meant on who, who sat on the committee? Yeah, but everybody that um, was applied. <laughs> Where was it posted? Was it posted on the school was, website or was that the last email? That everything, both. both. I didn't get an email. It was almost a year ago. Still didn't get an email. Are you a parent? I am. You should have gotten an email. Okay. So it wasn't even there. Did we put it on, on social media and newspaper? I mean, too? it was on social media. Yeah. It was emailed to any email addresses that were registered in Power School. It was um, published in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was quite Probably a lot yeah. And it's been discussed here multiple, th multiple yeah. times throughout. Yeah. I would say the meetings are open, so yes. and oh. public comment is allowed. So even if you're not sitting on the committee, mm -hmm. you know, please come. I mean, it's meant to be a community process. And even your voice here is giving us data. We, we do we do listen. I, I drove from Lancaster tonight. I don't know how the Lancaster rep, so I didn't. I understand. I'm on the yeah. committee, and I say, please come yeah. to the meetings, really. And speak up loud and clear. We do hear you, but we also have to listen to everything. Yes, ma'am. My name is Rena Vecchio. Um, could, you, could you tell us what nights that committee meets? And where? And where? And where? We, we yeah. don't have a um, special night in a day, and we had uh, some subcommittee work to do, so the next one isn't isn't um, published yet when we're going to meet. It'll be on um, the... It'll be, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll blast it out. Yeah, it'll be on the website and stuff. So I'm wondering if, listen, you know, like I hear, like, Rena wouldn't necessarily get a blast from... Right. So I'm wondering if maybe, I think you probably are more in tune as to town stuff, Rena, and it, maybe we could share, maybe we could add, like, the town clerk, Ooh. not town clerk for us, but, like, the secretary in... This town could put it on the town website. Like when we, yeah. so normally we post all of our agendas for these meetings at all of the town offices. Maybe we can start sending those. There's out. no reason not to. That would, would be a good a idea. Suggestion. You can't get enough information. No, no. And that's how we came to our last decision. It was the input from the people. Yeah, if you use that same same group, Stephanie, I would mm -hmm. think they could. And you saw that I. Somebody might have saw that I posted yesterday about this meeting, but I said it was last night. <laughs> so that's why we don't use social media too often. <laughs> I had to correct it. You had me worried. <laughs> <laughs> I had to correct it today. But and Benjamin told us about the meeting at a select Benjamin. Oh. At a selectman's meeting that it was gonna be here and that it would be nice for people. Mm -hmm. Come and just listen to that. No, we appreciate it. It is. We really do. We appreciate having people here to voice their opinions. Absolutely. We have many meetings where the room is empty except for the board and the district leadership team. And of course, every meeting is live streamed. Other than this one, but it will be uploaded tonight or tomorrow morning. We work for you. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I know that. Yeah. We know that. <laughs> Any other public comment? Seeing none, public comment. <laughs> <Yeah. Oops, sorry. laughs> um, Hi, uh, my name's John uh, Greer uh, from Carroll. And uh, just want to thank you all for volunteering for the board. It's a big commitment, and we appreciate that uh, very much. So uh, um, I pulled a, a, a survey up from the website, the Public School Review, uh, ranked all 455 towns in the state. And we're not doing that well in, in math and reading skills. 
in Whitefield. I'm just wondering if if we have a plan. I don't have an answer. I usually when you you know present a problem, you should have a you know some suggestion how to fix it. I'm not an educator. All I can do is look at our rankings and do we have any plans to improve our because I think we all we all want that, right? So do we have a plan how we could make it better? That's your oh, ask is sorry. incredibly timely, Mr. Yeah. Chair. The Educational Programming and Curriculum Committee have been looking at the most recent desk force, and we've invited our district leadership team to bring a presentation to a board meeting. Uh, the second November 21st. November to 21st. So November 21st, we'll be reviewing that data for our district specifically, and we've asked the district leadership team to come with plans and solutions. Okay. So you're very timely. I mean, we're all working at this together, and we all want the same thing, and, and you know, just down the road, Five miles, you know, the profile school ranks in the top third by far, and we're at the bottom of the, you know, the mid middle range. I mean, we're, it's below mediocre. You know, mediocre would be 50%. But, you know, I'm just thinking, but the kids are all the same, aren't they? I mean, are, are our kids, you know, from a different socioeconomic background in Bethlehem? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'll throw out one thing. I mean, maybe the school size has something to do with it. There's, I looked at that. We have, 350 some odd kids over there versus Bethlehem profile has 80, 86, and uh, the senior has 143 kids. So maybe it's a size. I don't know. To say I'm not not an expert, I'm just voicing a concern. Thank you. Uh, I mean, when Herb and I met with the district leadership team at, at programming, part of our questions for them were around root cause. How did we get? How did we get here? And the other questions were around now. What? What do we do? We have the what in, the, in terms of data. So what? What do we do? Um, I don't know, Herb, if you want to weigh in there either. I mean, it was the longest ed programming meeting we've ever yeah. had, and it was robust discussion. And we were pretty clear, I think, in asking our our district leadership to. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we have the professionals to get the job done. I just, you know. And I know there's a, a lot of you know issues in the home life, and we, I get all that. But, you know, they got the same issues in Bethlehem. Maybe, maybe they don't. I, I don't know. But it's just you know, I'm really glad to see you guys have noticed it and working on it. That's, that's all I have to say. The data, the newest data just came out. We just haven't, mm -hmm. like I said, uh, as Chris said, the the superintendent will present the district, the leadership team, what their plans are to do with that data that we haven't seen yet. The administration has, and but we understand, and we know that it's not very good. Well, when um, when we're all over the hill and we need care, those are the students that are going to be taking care of us. So that's maybe a motivating factor. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comment? Yes, sir. A question. Um, what's the necessity of this venture? Is is the committee tasked with finding a solution, or might there be an outcome that there is no solution? Everything stays the same. Which the uh, May transition. Seven, eight, great. There may be that it just stays the way it is. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with the previous study about right. moving. To, so when, to when that school. ended, they, were they tasked to find a new solution? And will that happen again? Or will there become a point where it's, okay, there's no solution? Well, we maybe focus on what yeah. Mr. Greer is talking about. The committee wasn't um, traditionally ended. It was purposely in August. It was requested that they go on hiatus because they were at an end to, mm -hmm. towards that, but we had already seen that there was an issue still between preschool and the seventh, eighth graders. And then even the number of seventh, eighth graders that are already going up to the high two school to the CTE program, which is working out really well. So that's that we allowed them to stay as a committee, an advisory committee, just to look at Again, one more shot at maybe we can fix this this way. Sure. And if I'm not, just thinking if, if there's a world where parents said no, they don't like that idea because it was the idea, and now the parents are presented with Lancaster. Let's go to the high school. We're all for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so there's a certain amount of you know, like, relative Relatively, understanding yeah. in the situation. Yeah. So yeah. if it is an absolute necessity, you yeah. know, having a comparative response might be beneficial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we have to look too that it's, um, you know, things change, right? I mean, the demographics change. We know we're, um, you know, it's sort of projected that the enrollment will continue on this slope downwards, right? So the right answer might be no 
now, in ten years, it might be something different. It's, you know, so like we can't ever say no, no, it's never going to happen. We, we just don't know. One of the other things that, that they're looking at too is the possibility, and it's, it's a, not any, but that the seventh eighth grade will go to right field, just because it's two floors, easier for the older kids to go up and down the stairs. But the problem, the counter problem, is the fields and the the sports and that kind of stuff is better suited to Lancaster. So, but they are looking even at that option. You got, you got to keep in mind that the main idea about combining this is it's a much better educational opportunity for all the students. If we have all the seventh and eighth graders in the same place, it's going to drastically improve the education. And it, it also it attempts to balance the tension between what we know is a substantial tax burden for our property owners in supporting the school budget for a five-time district and meeting the needs of our students. So there are some components of it that are economical for sure. But, you know, certainly one of the other messages we've heard very clearly this year is that increases in the school budget are not something that our property owners can sustain. So. In, in the context of state funding and, and if the limitations that it brings to rural districts like ours, there's an attempt, at least through this subcommittee, to figure out what other innovative solutions might exist for us in the North. I mean, we're good in the North Country at figuring things out with not many resources. So part of it is that tasking of, in the context of limited resources, with lower scores for the academic standardized testing, how do we achieve a high quality education for our kids that's consistent for all students from all towns. As a cooperative school district, this model is the idea that all, all pay so all can learn, right? How do we do that in a way that's fiscally responsible and produces high quality education and is equitable for students regardless of their zip code within a pretty substantial geographic area? As you pointed out, it's, we're a big district geographically. Mm -hmm. And all of those things are in tension with each other right now. So pulling together a community group like a, a subcommittee with 17 people, part of that intention is to put good brains in the room to be innovative and figure some of that out. Yes, sir. Um, just in response to what was being said about Lancaster, here you that may be a good educational opportunity. Again, it's really far. Yeah. So from that perspective, as a parent of a child here, I'll say, oh, there's a much better educational opportunity just down the street in Bethlehem that doesn't require driving that far. Uh, second, uh, let's talk about you know, the surveys and why our education system in this district seems to be lagging behind. Um, I'm gonna throw it out there. I've heard from multiple teachers who used to work in Whitefield who, who could work in Whitefield and said, I'm not taking a work any job in Whitefield because it's like the right at a step, the right at a step son of the district. And all like, the resources go to Lancaster and Whitefield doesn't get resources. And so we have a drainage of instructors from the school, from what I've been told, or at least people that are not willing to even consider working at the school because of the impression that Lancaster is the golden child of this school district and the other schools are not getting uh, the attention that they deserve. Not sure if it's true or not, just something you guys might want to know because it's out there and it's and something I hear a lot. Um, completely separate question though. So it seems like there's agreement that the current bus route, bus route is a problem. Mm -hmm. Is Absolutely. somebody looking at that? Yes. Yes. We even start thinking of yes. 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 And what is being done? Is there a status update on that? Hiring? Can, can you drive a bus? That's really what no, I'm But I will tell you, as a business raised owner. They salaries, yeah. they did everything, right? Yeah. They raised. Oh, they did. They we did rearrange some, some of the, just recently, a few weeks ago, we did. Um, because there's some outliers that really uh, did make the route like 40 minutes longer. And I think one of those, if I recall, one of those may have been a Bretton Woods. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which like became there's a two different, hour ride. No, no, there's yeah. a different bus now that goes to Bretton right. Woods. So right. And it's longer than the original bus. Was. Oh, it's longer what? than the yeah. original bus. Yeah. Right? Oh. We when are. they made the switch is when we stopped using the bus because we could tolerate the hour. It became like an hour and a half. A kid should not be on a bus for no, uh, no we, we, yeah. we yeah. all agree. We are uh, totally one of the, appalled when we found out how long these kids are on the bus, right? One of the other things we, when we talked about 7-8 transition to Lancaster is it would be required that we have a direct bus from Bretton Woods directly to Lancaster. Yeah. 
not stopping at the Whitefield School, not stopping at the high school, not, you know, and and a, and a separate bus from Jefferson, not stopping and that anywhere sounds else. Great, but you can't even guarantee that a child is under an hour now. How do you think that's going to happen magically? Well, that's, that's when I, I'm skeptical when I see the current situation. Now you're adding to it. We can't fix one without the other. So yeah. we don't, we, like I said, we wouldn't make it worse just to get the 7 8 transition if we needed to get the 7 8 transition. So. We put a math teacher on the bus, you know? Put this man uh, on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> Do I understand, uh, Dr. Anastasia, do I understand it's not just our district that needs oh, bus drivers? I mean, it's, just like, it's not just our district, it's like all over. Um, that they, no, it's not all the same, but it it is a very common problem. I mean, people don't want to walk. Okay, any other public comment? That's it? Okay, the public comment period remains open until 6.35 to uh, go in accordance with the state law that requires a half hour. If you do have a public comment from this point on, please raise your hand and we will suspend whatever we're working on. I mean, this is, I know I'm beating a, a horse to death here, but I mean, just looking at the state um, numbers in general, I mean, 38% is the average proficiency for a student in this state. General, we're below, in math, we're below that. And and in England, in, in reading, it's 51 or 52%, right? And I, I was, I mean, this is New Hampshire. I, I thought we'd be, you know, all rocket science you know, mm -hmm. here, but, you know, I, I was shocked by the overall state performance and proficiency, not, not just here, but overall. Okay. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. Yes, ma'am. I would think the pandemic had a little bit to do with this. I mean, there was a, some kids really lost. You know, Personally, I'm of the opinion that we're, we could use that excuse for a while, but we're pretty excuse. much at the I end of that excuse. Just a, I think it's a fact. Oh, definitely. Yes, just a little bit. Well, that was hmm? Yeah. But that doesn't everywhere. explain why we would be so low. Mm -hmm. That's everywhere. Oh, right. right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think that's where you lost some kids sometimes. Yes. Okay. So, any other public comment? And we will move on. Then. Next item on the agenda is the superintendent's approval. Dr. Anastasia. Giles wants to just announce something. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just share real quickly. Um, I just heard back from a state rep this morning from the Department of Education. Um, and I've been selected as a finalist to serve as a delegate of New Hampshire to participate in the Senate Youth Program down in Washington, D.C. Oh. Oh. I don't know you yet, but... Uh, you'll, still be, you'll still be here. Oh, yes. Oh, oh definitely. Fantastic. So there's 11 finalists, and four are going to be chosen. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. To get to this point is amazing. Yes, so good for you. Thank you. So I do, I do want to comment to the public. I really appreciate your feedback, and we listen to you. We, we listen to you, and we appreciate it. Um, I'm going to do a little follow-up for pre-K. Uh, starting Monday, the four-year-old program will be extended to include an additional full day on Wednesday. So it'll be going Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Three-year-old program remains the same. Um, the Whitefield Elementary School staffing, uh, Ms. Robin Sweet, has been transferred from Lancaster to teach um, in English language arts and social studies in grade five, along with Isabel. Um, David Hool has been transferred from Lancaster to teach part-time grade one at Whitefield, and he'll continue his Tuesday, Thursday schedule. He's a part-time employee, a very long, spent, he's retired from, from our district. Um, and then Ms. Janine Holmes has been transferred to West to teach the sixth grade math science alongside, alongside me. So we have some, some relief from our staffing shortage in September. <laughs> um, and we're still, we're still, um, have some advertisements out there that are all active. Um, 
So uh, NESDEC visited the high school. This is a team of people, it's called New England Association of School Colleges Accreditation Process. And they come in every 10 years and do an accreditation of the high school. And I have some preliminary results and recommendations from them. The report, the final report will be in in about four weeks. But uh, we feel that this is spot on. It was a really good exercise. The high school worked really hard to get through this, this process. What they did is they went through five standards and gave commendations and recommendations for each standard. I'm going to tell you what they are. Standard one is the learning culture. And the commendations were all the revamped course offerings that they have, the climate of safety, and the civics action that is underway. Some recommendations is data analysis process, curriculum development with time to do the work, and they are actively committed to image of a grad. Standard two is student learning. The accommodations are a robust off offering of courses. Students have a voice for change and course offerings driven by student voice along with the master schedule. The recommendations are vertically aligned, consistent format of curriculum, including middle school and consistent grading system and reporting. Standard three is professional practices. Accommodations of voices are heard from students, staff, parents, and community. Formal and informal professional development of teachers, full-time teacher leader, common planning time for co-teachers. The recommendations are additional PD for utilizing and analyzing data and PD for heterogeneous grouping and classes. Formal opportunity for staff to unpack data and implement. Standard four is learning support. Accommodations are experienced school librarian, adventure ed program, and plethora of, sports, of supports for all students. The recommendations are to ensure a level of certified professionals and resources for supports, case managers burnout, co-teaching and case managing together. And lastly, standard five is learning resources. The accommodations are the school buildings and grounds, the student learning commons, gender neutral bathrooms, one-on-one -on -one Chromebooks, small class sizes, extensive opportunities, EOP school safety, managing forestry on property. The recommendations is that we need a science lab upgrade, continuing updating, updating CTE, collaborative time, and continue to do curriculum work. And the overall priority areas are create formal processes for assessing the image of a grad, curriculum development, and develop a school improvement plan with established timeline. So what echoes across this and all of the uh, standards is the curriculum. We really need to get our curriculum work um, completed and aligned. So that, that will also help with the, with the outcomes as well. Um, I will now, I know I could do it during the uh, time when we talk about advisory committees, but I have a little update about the advisory committees and what we've been doing. Um, this is the 7, 8, and the pre-K advisory committee. Um, we had some subcommittee members doing some research, and they came out with a, just a quick synopsis of their research. Um, one of the areas was facility readiness. Um, a review of facilities with building principles showed that both Whitefield and Lancaster would have the space necessary to move 7-8 district-wide to Lancaster and all pre-K students to Whitefield. Further clarification is needed at Whitefield regarding the building being two-story and young students, students accessing the second story. West is unique in that we have the front of the building is two-story, whereas the rear has direct access to the ground level because the school is built into a hill. Additionally, West has been approved for a playground specific to the needs of young children and a second playground for older elementary students. Lancaster would be more a more conducive spot for middle school students because of accessibility to most middle school athletic fields and a gymnasium where teams practice and play their home games. Middle school field hockey would still take place on the Whitefield grounds and busing from middle school students to, from Lancaster to Whitefield is already in place. Lancaster also has slightly larger classrooms that are more useful for older students and two science labs if needed, while Whitefield has only one science lab. So that was just the, there's no opinions, it's just that's the way it is. And we all know that about the 
two facilities. So then another subcommittee did staffing and programming. In the preschool area, we are recommending two five-day, full-day, four-year-old classrooms. The frequency and duration of the three-year-old program is still to be determined, but would be between three and five half or full days, depending on the needs of the students. Staffing would include two FTEs for the four-year-old program and a one full-time for three-year-old program. For middle school, the recommendation is eight teachers, two per content area, and two and a half special educators. Given projected combined middle school population based on current enrollment, this would allow for class sizes of 14 to 18 over the next seven years. Additional school counselors would be required as would, with the possibility of some additional supports and learning comments. So that's that data. You know what that data is. Transportation, this is just a mess. That's it's all hypothetical because we haven't, we did talk to the bus company um, and we asked them about direct routes from Twin to Lancaster, Dalton to Lancaster, uh, Jefferson to Lancaster. They couldn't quite wrap their heads around it. So we kind of dropped it right there at that point and said when we, when we further in the study, we will um, get that information. Um, and then the preschool transportation to dis is most of the kids in preschool do have IEPs, so we provide the transportation in our small um, vans that we have, but parents do um, usually bring their preschool kids. And then I went through and did the enrollment, and I won't go through every grade level, but um, grade seven and eight would be 114 kids at in one school if, if we combined it and we can't say the numbers for the pre-k three and four because we don't we don't know who the threes that are coming in and because we have such a small number of threes now we can't we, can't, we don't know what the four years are yet. but we're doing some child finding coming up in the spring so that's that's the progress we've made on the study and then the surveys were completed today and i gave them to jeremy to blast out tonight to get the parent input and so, I mean, that's what drove our decision last time was the surveys. So, that's where we are. Thank you. Can I say something? Yep. Oh, no. The committee that met, three of us met with the committee that was here at the high school. And, and the NIAS. The NIAS committee. Oh, yes. And I was very, very pleased that the gentleman that was heading up that committee said that he was so impressed with our students that when he enters the school, he always speaks to the students, says good morning, and welcomes them and things like that. And he says our students would stop and speak to him, say good morning, they were very polite, and he says in a lot of schools, they just walk by him and won't even look at him. He was and he truly says he impressed. was unbelievably impressed with our students. Thank you. Next is Assistant Superintendent Report. Rob is not here, and Gary's going to fill in for him. Um, so, as you know, our forestry plan is out of date for the district. Um, so, Dave Falkenham, who is the forester for the Peter Powell property, that's going to be they're going to be logging the bus of school property this winter. He's put a, propos a proposal in to update our plan. Um, He'd like to work with Kayla Graham's class and take them to like the log, you know, to see how Forrest is going to be logging um, over Peter Powell's forestry plan and uh, work with them to update ours, our plan. Um, so with this, I mean, there's a, a charge, a, a cost. So what he's recommended is there's a cutting a three to five acre piece up on State Hill, which is up behind the senior rock with the seniors paint every year. Um, and that area <clears throat> will serve as a log yard for Peter Powell's. They can put some logs there while they're logging. And um, it'll also update, uh, not update, but make our ski trail better, um, get some of that woods cleared away. Um, so the money from that, that they get for the wood off that three to five acre piece can go towards 
the uh, cost of this project is going to do. Um, so there'll be there'll be remap uh, map mapping. Um, Maps, um, classroom time, and um, out in the field time with this, with Kayla's class. So there's a action agenda, action agenda item right. for this. Yeah, and we're going to include Primex in with um, the plans for having the kids out there. Okay. Make sure that it's a lot of work and that everybody's safe. Yeah. It's a nice example of how our CTE program is able to work with community um, and, and learn from real world examples of how what they're learning in the classroom applies in, in the real world. And this is a 10 year a 10 year plan that is that they're going to prepare for us. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? We're moving on. We can do questions when it comes up on the action. Yeah. 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 Uh, Director of Finance, do you have anything to add tonight, Melissa? Okay. The budget is coming along. We're first um, starting with salaries, the cost driver, right? We're going to start there. Um, we're working really hard um, this week and next week getting all of our curriculum costs. And then we're going to meet with the principals and we're going to say, this is how much money we have left. How are we going to spend this? So we, are, we heard what you wanted. Uh, for bottom line, and then we're we're approaching it a little bit different. And the special ed is special ed. I mean, we can't we can't mess around with the mandatory uh, things, but we'll we'll tease all that out for you. Pretty soon. Sure. Committee reports, uh, ed programming. Anything new? I think one of the hot news from ed programming lately is just what we talked about a little bit earlier okay. in response to Mr. Gary's question. Thank you. Facilities, Mr. Brady. You have the minutes in your packet. Mm -hmm. The Whitefield HVAC system is coming along and should be finished soon. Uh, the reason we were so cold at the last board meeting when we held it in Whitefield was they had the fans reversed. So they were pulling cold air in instead of putting the air out of the building. So that was done at the factory. They had to uh, solve that problem. Um, there, going to be putting their wiring to put uh, smoke detectors into the air system and the gymnasium. All right, and uh, he talked about the Falkenham Forest Plan. That would uh, cost us about $17 an acre for a total of about uh, $6,000. The reason that we agreed to go, the board approved it to go with the Falkenham Plan is that they're willing to work with the students, which we've never had before. So the students would actually learn from this. And that would be a major, major accomplishment. Okay. And, uh, and he spoke about the plan, hopefully, to get enough trees that we can pay for it anyways. So that's uh, the Whitefield doors. We have some of them. They're uh, looking into getting a safety grant to get them changed because they have a hard time closing some of them and they want to make sure that uh, the doors are safe. <coughs> All right. uh, and then we discussed uh, other parts, uh, the folding walls in Lancaster, looking into getting them repaired, that uh, they're not looking in such good shape. Uh, and pressure washing the panel along the top of the high school, which is looks so dirty and miserable and maybe Try to get someone to do that. All right, uh, I think that's about all of it, unless I'm forgetting something. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is personnel committee. Me. Um, <coughs> the personnel committee is still currently meeting for negotiations with the WMEA, and they're ongoing. That's all I need to say about that. The negotiations. Um, policy. Anything new? No chair is not here. There's something in there. There's just Second one in the action. Yes. Okay. District wellness. Anything? No. 
We have a meeting coming up with the coordinators of the subcommittees on the 8th of November. So that'll be um, for our November 9th meeting. I'll be able to play with that. Thank you. And through that committee, um, Katie worked really hard and Chris to get um, John Halligan here for Ryan's story. It's in January. I don't exactly remember the date, but um, he's coming to do a presentation to the high school kids. And we're going to have both middle schools come together and have the presentation at the high school and also a presentation in the evening for parents. It's about bullying and suicide prevention. Um, we've got a grant for the buses, and you got the grant for the presentation. The speaker. Yeah. yeah. So it's at no cost to the district, but it is a pretty compelling uh, offering from a parent who has lost a child to death by suicide and can speak directly to the not that bullying was the cause of the suicide, but that it was a contributing factor to his child's mental state. Um, it's pretty powerful stuff. That sounds interesting. Okay, unfinished business, the advisory committee updates, which we've done the 7-8 transition. Um, for those that don't know, we, are, we did begin a new, or it is beginning, forming a new advisory committee for a capital improvement plan for all three buildings. Um, we have been fortunate in that we've replaced just about all the roofs in all the schools, as well as the heating systems in all the schools without raising a bond issue or um, using upper and federal money and capital improvement uh, capital plan money that was already in place. So we have no debt, but this committee will look at what still needs to be done. And I'm not sure who's been to the high school lately. The access road into the high school is in pretty tough shape. The road into Lancaster School is in pretty rough shape, as well as the parking lot. And same with Whitefield. So they're going to look at all the issues that need to be addressed and then look at possible ways to fund them. So I think we don't have the names yet, right? I think at the next meeting. I think it's today. It's oh, you do have, we yeah. do have the names. Yeah. So there is the new committee would be forming soon. Our buildings are in the bad shape they've been in in years. Okay. Uh, Lancaster and Whitefield both have brand new roofs. The high school has only one portion left to do, all right, which is a major investment because mm -hmm. it's probably going to end up costing us close to $2 million to do that. And the heating and systems. We've got it done in the new heating systems and everything. Uh, they're in excellent shape, actually. Which is... I think the nice thing about Rob taking on the, the capital plan project, too, is that it allows us to schedule and and fundraise carefully and thoughtfully for those, those improvements so that we're not feeling surprised by failures of our, our right. actual hard facilities. And, and so that our facilities team is able to plan their days out without worrying about which fires around the next corner and <laughs> kick into some of that preventative maintenance that long-term saves the district substantially. Right. Absolutely. Okay, new business, any new business? New business, now we move on to the action agenda. <coughs> action agenda item number one, to accept the following resignation. Christine Quigley, White Mountain Regional High School. Venture Education Paraprofessional, effective October 20th, 2023. Moved by Ben. I'll second. Second by Chris. Any questions? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Action agenda item number two, to approve the following nominations. Jordan Garrett, Lancaster Elementary School, Middle School Science Teacher. Step one, B, salary. $40,800 to be prorated pending emergency authorization from the Department of Education. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Evelyn? I'll second it. Second by Chris. Any questions? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Action agenda item three, to approve the following building leadership team, co-curricular and coaching nominations. I will first accept a motion to waive, waive the reading of the names. Yeah. Waive the reading of the names <laughs> by Chris. And then I've got it for you. <laughs> and seconded by Ben. All in favor? Any opposed? We waive, waive the reading of 
many names. <laughs> so, action gen item now on the motion to approve the following building leadership team, co-curricular, and coaching nominations as listed in the action agenda item. Do I have a motion? Okay. Moved by Chris. Second. Second by Ben. Any discussion or questions? I do have one question. So I know, I know, I'm gonna do it again. So uh, the uh, the number of the high school building leadership team is eight, and that includes one that's funded by the bar grant. So we removed her from the distribution team. Where is it on there now? It is. I'm oh, I trying it. to find it. Oh. Yeah, there's one name that's listed as funded so by the bar grant. J G. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. She's, she's not going to be. Not, I don't even see it on here. I, I oh, think I'm missing a page. She's not on the page. Is the O number? Oh, oh, that's the okay. This one. So yeah. that should have been removed. I'm oh. sorry. Thank you. For okay. Me. All right. I maybe I didn't tell Steph. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Jen Granducci. Yep. Yeah. So that's being removed. Yes, from she won't be a building leader. Building. Okay. So I'll move to amend the list by striking that name. Yeah. I second okay. it. Moved and second. All in favor. Opposed? Motion carries. And now a motion on the entire list. That's what it Remaining. Yeah. yeah. Moved by Chris. Well, no, it was already moved. Oh, sorry. Oh. Within the, within we just got to start. We just have to vote. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor? Any opposed? <clears throat> motion carries unanimous. Action agenda item number four. To approve the window security film project at the White Mountain Regional High School not to exceed the total amount of $34,489.02 funds to come from the SAFE grant in the amount of $24,000 and the remaining $10,489.02 to come from the Life Safety Deficiencies Capital Reserve Fund. Do I have a motion? Second. Moved by Evelyn. I'll second it. Second by Ben. Any questions? Yeah, how much, what's the balance in that Life Safety Deficiency Capital Reserve Fund? Do you have that, Melissa? I budget? do not have it. I can bring all the balance. Is this going to dry it up or is there still plenty left in there? I think there was enough left. So I don't know if okay. it's going to max it out. But I can bring those the next time. Okay. Or just send them with the packet or whatever. That's fine. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion carries unanimous. Action agenda item number five, to approve the development of the 10-year forestry plan from New England Forestry Consultants, amount not to exceed $6,034, with funds to come from the Forest Timber Revenue Capital Reserve Fund. I'll move it. Moved by Chris. Second. Second by Herb. Any questions or comments? Yep. Yes. Um, so there's a cost there now that I see. In the presentation, it was, they talked about offsetting that cost some with the timber from that section above the rock yes. whatever you call it um any idea of what the offset will be i'm not sure okay and um my question then i would think be, i believe rob was hoping it break it's going to even break yeah, it's even out watch. so we pay out of the capital the forest funds six thousand yeah and then they expect to make six thousand from the forest, the timber, and, which will go back into the forest. <laughs> okay, that's where I'm trying to get to. So we're hoping that it's going to be a wash, but we yes. don't know. Right. You can't be sure until you. It's right. Okay. So then my next question is: It was a three to three to five three acre. To, yeah, three to five acre piece. How? Who makes that decision as to if it's three or four or five? I believe the forester will probably be the one that makes the final decision. Okay, and he is working for us. He's working for both us and Peter Powell. He, <coughs> he's working for Peter Powell, but he's willing to come on to help us out also. Right, well, 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 which I'm all for. I just want to make sure that we're protecting our assets as well yeah. in terms of yeah. he, when he's deciding if it's three or five acres or four and a half, whatever that happens, he at that point has our best interest in. I, I imagine probably the three to five acres is depend on how heavily it's wooded. Mm -hmm. So like if we, maybe he thinks if, you know, cutting three acres, he's not, it's not going to be enough to pay for it. We'll just go for four, four or five acres. Okay. So, so, you know, so it evens out. The size will depend on, that's what he's trying to get. I think he's so. He's trying yeah. to cover yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm fine. So we're a wash. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Any opposed? 
The motion carries unanimous. Action agenda item number six, to appoint the following members to the Capital Improvement Planning Advisory Committee to the board. James Ackerman, Jerry Greer, Teresa Russo, George Broder, Scott Holmes, Gary Brown, Melissa Wadsworth, Cheryl Plumley, James Brady, and Marion Anastasia. I believe Rob's name got... <laughs> she left his own name out of his own committee. And Rob Scott. I'll move it with the amendment that we add Rob's name. Okay. The motion made. Second. I'll second it. Second by Ben. Any other questions? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Action agenda item seven to approve the purchase of 10 Kenwood portable radios, five for Whitefield Elementary <coughs> School, five for Lancaster Elementary School, from TAC2 Communications. In the amount not to exceed $3,727.98. Funds to come from the Life Safety Deficiencies Capital Reserve Fund. I love it. Moved by Chris. I'll second that. Second by Evelyn. Any questions? Can anybody, is that you, Jeremy? Is that Rob? Rob. That was Rob. Rob. So, um, just reading my notes here. Um, it was found, just recognized this year, that each school, um, was short like five radios. They need an additional five radios per school. Okay, and so these are basically we're just adding to the number. Adding that to the we number already we have. already have. It's not yep. a new exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And so is it safe to then assume that the high school isn't short radios or right. doesn't use them? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Action agenda item number eight, to approve the following fundraiser crowdfunding request with capital funds anticipated to exceed $500. Class of 2025, the Halloween dance. Class of 2025, pie sales. Life skills program, pancake breakfast and fundraisers for field trips, special events. Lancaster Elementary School grade six, wreath sales. And Varsity Girls basketball fundraising crowdfunding campaign that they expect to make $500, but I'm not sure what they're going to do. I'm on. Moved by Chris. Second. Yes. Second by Herb. Any other questions? This is in response to finding that our policy requires us to pre approve anytime that a over $500 fundraiser is anticipated. And um, what I want to add, none of these have it, but um, Jeremy and Melissa are working really hard trying to find a venue in which, if we something like uh, Venmo, but not Venmo because we don't like Venmo, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, something so that money can be filtered that way. But we haven't found one, have right. we? No. So these are all cash in hand yeah. events. The, the company that we use for the meal system, Link, yeah. Link to. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's a goal. Yeah, because we're already set up. The parents already have a portal, and the idea would be you don't have to get access to a whole other system. Mm -hmm. and they're secure because they're using. The and they're so approved through the data privacy agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion carries unanimous. Uh, we do need to have a. I think. Sorry, it's my moderator coming out. I think. I think we got to go back to number six. I don't think we can just add Rob. I think we have to vote. We have to amend that action agenda item first, and then we can vote on it. We can't just add it into it. So move it, then amend it, then vote yeah. it. Okay. All right, so we'll go back to the proper action agenda item. He was and added first. On that. We but but, he wasn't, but Jimmy wasn't added on the agenda that was Correct. out in public. So um, I think we have to vote to add him as an, okay. as an so, amendment. So, action agenda item number six. The first part is to amend that action agenda item to add the name Rob yes. Scott to the list of members. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. I'll move it again. Second by Chris. Any other questions? All in favor? Motion okay. carries unanimous. And now, action agenda item six to appoint the Following members to the Capital Planning Advisory Committee to the board, James Aikerman, Jerry Greer, Teresa Russo, George Broder, Scott Holmes, Gary Brown, Melissa Wadsworth, Cheryl Plumley, James Brady, Marion Anastasia, and Rob Scott. So moved. Moved by Ben, second by Evelyn. 
Any other questions? All in favor? Motion carries unanimous. I just want you to run the board tonight. So we do need a non-public in um, relation to chapter RSA 91A colon 3 section 2C. But before we go and make that motion, I would like to thank all of you for coming. Yes, thank you. We truly appreciate it. And we do hear you. And we need to continue. In, on November 9th, we'll be at Dalton Town Hall. Or well, you can come see us at the high school and most most of our time. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. We will not be having any action agendas after the non-public.